helpful. And this is why uh, I think uh, uh, it's important to understand the importance of yoga or like Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic science, which is actually nothing but life science. Uh, we came across uh, during the conference and during our discussion uh, in uh, Quarner when the Ayush delegation visited Quarner in Rieka and signed the agreement for health and wellness uh, cooperation uh, that Ayurveda is life science. And when you translate that life science into Croatian, it becomes Nane o Jivotu. And Nane o Jivotu is nothing but Jivan Gyan. Uh, and this is a very interesting aspect of Croatian language and Sanskrit uh, similarity. And I was very happy to know that you have this commonality of language in Ayurveda also. Ayurveda is life science, which is Jivan Gyan, and which is also Jnane or Jivotu. So I'm very happy that in Croatia, we are doing these events with uh, more and more Croatian people participating. And thank you very much, uh, Yogacharya Meklitz, to leading this effort. Uh, welcome to Dr. Swanpuri and looking forward to a very good session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Your Excellency, that's uh, what you're doing in Croatia. It's uh, really amazing. And uh, we are all inspired by your work in Croatia, the way you're conducting conferences and uh, all the online uh, sessions and the way you're connecting to the people in that country. It's an amazing achievement what you're doing. We are all thankful for you, uh, for these efforts which you're doing. I'm sure Croatians will be much benefited uh, no, because Croatia is a small country, sir, but yet uh, they have a lot of wisdom, uh, ancient wisdom. They wanted to learn Ayurveda. They wanted to learn yoga. So these kind of things, I'm watching them since long time. I think now it's time has come for them with your presence. I'm sure they will be growing much better in the future. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I would like to talk uh, about some subject. Namaste, sir. Namaste, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Suresh Swarnapuri here. This is a very interesting uh, topic. We are, as uh, uh, His Excellency was explaining about the stress levels and all, but we need to understand how to unfold the mechanism of the, uh, the stress and how to unfold the mechanism of uh, removing the problem. It's actually, if you see everywhere, uh, there's a stress management everywhere. Actually, I'm always thinking uh, when, I, when I'm talking to the people, when I'm in my consultations with everybody, you know, why we should manage the stress. The first point, I always think, why we should manage the stress and what is the need for us? This is the first thing we need to assess. Is it, we can manage our emotions, we can manage our family, we can manage our finance, we can manage our social activities, but why we should manage the stress? Because if you see this ancient uh, Vedic culture and all, it's not much mentioned there about this activity of high stress levels and all those things. It, it, there are some uh, chapters written by Charaka are there, but they did not go into much into this level of uh, stress. This is, the, this is the thing happening since 50 or 60 years to the humanity. We are not supposed to manage the stress. This is important. We need to manage ourselves. This is important point. So there is no need to manage the stress at all, according to me. You need to understand the technologies which is available in Ayurveda and yoga. If you can practice every day those kind of technologies, Vedic technologies, I call them as, then I'm sure that we, we doesn't need to do even management of the stress. Why we should manage the stress? Because the stress is nothing but the stress hormones which is released in our brain. So this is ACTH hormones and corticosol hormones and the prolactin hormones. These are the three hormones which works. The size of the, the weight of the hormones is just, just three to four milligrams, but it can create havoc in the entire human body, isn't it? So for that three, four, three to four milligrams of these hormones, the entire faculties of physical and mental faculties is, is being uh, uh, destabilized on day-to-day -day basis. 
So we need to address that area and we need to see how the Vedic technologies, our masters has mastered this art of prevention of all this anxiety, stress. For me, anxiety, stress, nervousness, depression, all this comes into same platform. I don't see any big difference in them at all because the origin is the same. Only the manifestation is different in different areas. Today, we are going to work on this Vedic technologies, how we can work, uh, how we can organize these Vedic technologies for the mankind, for the humanity, for the families, as His Excellency was talking uh, in pandemic, how to, how to unfold this mechanism of Vedic technologies that we are going to see. There are a few technologies are there, four to five Vedic technologies are available in ancient Vedic system that I am going to talk with you today. Yes, we all know Ayurveda, we all know yoga, but there are some other mechanisms out there which we are going to uh, uh, unfold that today. We will, we will go one by one, one by one, step by step, the origin of the stress. Uh, chemically, you know, chemically we already discussed. Now we will go into the, uh, the method of uh, understanding of this stress and what was the WHO says, what are the other areas they talk about the stress. Let us see that. So today the topic is handling the stress with the ancient Vedic technologies during pandemic. I don't think it's only the pandemic. It, it, it's all the time there is some issues out there. Before the pandemic, pandemic also, the people are under high pressure, high stress levels, just there is an aggravation has gone up in during the pandemic. But it's a, let it be the pandemic area, this time or the post pandemic, the mechanism of understanding should be the similar, the mechanism of uh, uh, giving the treatment for all the problems should be the similar, the prevention of the, all the problems, we have to make it uh, a proper channelized treatment procedures that I will talk to you later. So we all know, what is the stress? The role of stress in etiology, you know, a lot of diseases, uh, physical diseases and mental diseases, the stress has got a great influence and in the uh, 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 in entire physiology. For example, I'll tell you, in my practice, uh, when I say 20 years back, uh, usually cholesterol, for example, I'm giving you, usually cholesterol will rise only because of uh, eating fatty foods and uh, lack of exercises and all those things. But if you see these days, even though you don't eat fatty foods, you don't eat uh, heavier foods, which is for heavier food for digestions, you know, uh, still the stress levels is going up. Then they came to, research has been done on this area. Then they came to understand that when the cholesterol can raise because of the high stress levels. The stress levels is inducing hypertension. The stress is inducing carcinomas. So there is a heavy influence on the physical and the liver and the brain. All the structures are much bigger than the stress hormones. I told you already, the stress hormones is just three to four milligrams in entire body. It circulates and just see that reactionary mechanism of the stress hormones, which is making havoc in entire physical area, physical and uh, uh, mental faculties. Now we are going to see in Ayurveda, very nicely they said one word called sahasa. Uh, it's in uh, stress, uh, there is no direct reference for stress in Ayurveda. Many people have quoting many, many different things, but we have to consider in a doshas concept, we have to see how the doshas are uh, uh, exploring the stressful activities, all these things we will work on that. So well, how does it happen? So this happens because of ojokshaya. This is a loss of immunity. There are two things happening here now. So once you lose the immunity, the stress goes up. And again, because of the stress, the immunity goes down. So these are the things, it's, it, there is no, where is the beginning, where is the end? So we have to work on the case by case. We have to work on the disease by disease. So, so the ojokshaya means the loss of immunity, the loss of it, when the immune system uh, goes down, then usually they say the stress levels goes up. So again, when the stress level goes up, then again, the immunity goes down. So in this pandemic, what's happening is that a low immunity is happening. In that low immunity is happening because of the high stress levels. High stress levels, again, low immunity is happening. When the immunity is going down, then you can see the manifestation of infections at the highest level. And this manifestation of diseases in highest levels occurring also, there is a 
uh, in Ayurveda, we call it as Anulomakshaya. There, there is a de degrade, de de uh, degradation process is going on in all the levels of the biochemistry in the physiology. We'll see what it is. Again, as his excellency was explaining, stress is the greatest threat, you know, isn't it? It's the greatest threat. Uh, it weakens the immune system, isn't it? And you and me, everybody are prone for that. Whenever you have a physical uh, body, uh, any physical body, any life, any physical body with life, always prone for some diseases or other here and there. You cannot be a completely healthy person. You cannot be a completely stable person. It is impossible for any human being. I always tell my students, the only one person who is be stable uh, is a dead person. So only the dead person is a stable person because you don't react for viruses. You don't react for your, your squirrels. You don't react for your angry. So it doesn't react for anything. So the stable person is only the dead person. When you have a physical body, which is functioning both physically and mentally, definitely you're going to react. Only thing is what we are going to do is with the Vedic technologies, you can bring down the reactionary mechanism, create the stableness within yourself. Come whatever happens surrounding you. That's what we're going to work on this level now. The mental faculties has got a greater, greater influence in all the diseases, especially during the pandemic, the huge, more than the pandemic uh, diseases, you, you, you have a much more, uh, uh, what do you say, this uh, manifestation of uh, stress levels is going on uh, in every country which I watched that the manifestation of stress is very high co compared to the, uh, the PCR test or the pandemic uh, situations in that, that particular countries. So what happens is when you have, when the immune system diminishes, they usually the microorganisms penetrates, you know, the, the, the infective organs, usually we have a lot of bacteria in our body, more than our physical cells, cells in the body, trillions of cells we have in the physical level, right? In the brain and all the ent entire physical body, right? So what happens is the, 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 from outside, there is a, always there is a force it's coming inside the body, which attacks the body when we, our so cells are not in a preparation for that. The, the, the response to that, the immunity tries to respond that when, because of the mental faculties are not organized, you know, the mental faculties are not organized, then the resistance of the liver, the lungs, the heart, and the brain goes down. So it's a very important, a good, healthy person, according to Ayurveda, we all know. Samadosha, samadhatu, samadvishya, malakriya, prasannatmendriya manaha, swastya itya vidyate. In Sanskrit, very, just entire health of a person was stored in, in one line. The entire Ayurveda you can study in just one line. That one line we can explore in different dimensions of mental faculties, all those things, you know. So that is a healthy person is one who, is, who need to have a stable platform, physical stable platform and mental stable platform. If the mental faculties are not functioning, even though you have a physical, physical platform which is organized, it's of no use. Again, it destabilizes. So there should be a there should be a, a coherence between their mental faculties and physical faculties that we will see how to organize them. What is stress? Again, I would like to come back. According to WHO, uh, they are also telling, uh, you know, defines mental health as a state of well-being. You know, it's absence of mental disorders is not the healthy. You know, uh, healthy absence of uh, absence of mental disorders is healthy process. Okay. And the, the, what is the normal stress? What is the normal person who can able to cope with the normal stress and who can handle the mental faculties, who can handle the physical faculties, all the bio, uh, biochemical process, you know, biochemical process in the physiology, all the faculty functions, all this to be controlled by the human being. That person is called as a healthy person according to the uh, uh, WHO. What is stress again? The stress is nobody causes us any stress to us. Neither pandemic. Pandemic do not induce stress to us. Pandemic do not give any mental infections. Mental infection is not there at all. It is a physical infection it can give. The mental infection is caused by ourselves. 
So what is stress here? Stress is nothing but the inability to manage our own thoughts and emotions. Only three to 4% outside it's coming. There is a stimulation from outside, only three to 4%, rest 95 to 96% is caused within ourselves. So we are manufacturing the diseases by ourselves. No third person is giving us any problem. So it is, we have to address ourselves as His Excellency was very nicely telling. Uh, we have to balance stability. You need to create this stability within you. For that, you need to work. Just taking vaccinations, just uh, doing, taking some uh, antibodies and all those things, it's not going to help. It's not going to solve the pandemic, uh, mental pandemic situations now. But we need to, of course, we need to take care of uh, phys physical level. But there's, if you have a mental deficiency is going on, then whatever the treatment you take for physical level, it's not going to work. Mental illness is a disturbance of the relationship between the cognitive adaptive capacity. Adaptation is very important according to Ayurveda. You need to adapt your body. That's why we get in the picture of Dinacharya, Rutucharya, daily rotation, daily routines, and the seasonal routines have been extremely well fabricated in Ayurvedic science because adaptation, the one, every year we are growing in age, right? And we cannot eat the same food all the time. You need to change the food habits every year. And unfortunately, all the human beings, they just follow whatever the food they're having since their childhood. It's not going to work out like that. Every year, the food plan has to change. So that means you need to adapt. You need to adapt every year. And you need to adapt every season. That is, the, that is why it's called as adaptation mechanism. If there is an if there is a defective inability, the inability to adapt yourself, then you are getting into mental illness. Or not only mental illness, physical illness also can happen. Environmental effect on the human being is very less. It is everything is self-help. We gen we generate, we generate the, we manufacture the. Uh, the diseases within ourselves. You know, our body is full of chemicals. Our body is full of hormones. Our body is full of enzymes. In Ayurveda, we call it tridoshas. Vata, pitta, kapha, sapta, datus, seven tissues, rasa, rakta, mamsa, medha, asti, majja, shukra. These are the things which Ayurveda explains very beautifully. And these are the biochemical process, bionistical process, which is organizing the functions of the entire uh, uh, systems in the physiology. You know, we have many systems, nervous system, their system, all the systems, they are working with the highest level with these with this three doshas, because in Ayurveda, we treat the doshas. We don't treat the just symptoms. That's what the beauty of this science goes. Of course, uh, are you the life process, you know, inside, uh, we all think uh, the life means, uh, uh, everybody thinks that life is not just going to school, earning money, or marriage, and eating food. No, that's not the life. That is lifestyle. These are all extension of your physical and mental faculties. Yeah, whatever you do, the day-to-day -day routines, you go to office, you work at office, you eat food, you get married, you go to children. These are all extension of your physical extensions there are. These are all mental extensions, but they are not, this is not the life. The life is the most beautiful Ayurveda explained, are uh, you. The life process which begins from the birth and ends in the death. So that is the, the, pro, the life is the one which carries the human, uh, human physical existence till their death. For the life, you need a physical body, right? For that body to function, you need a mental, mental faculties. That's how the org arrangement has been done for the, for the human existence. So this is the one in healthy state. Mental health care is the integral part of the swastia. Yes, sure. According to Ayurveda, mental health is the integral part of the uh, swastia. So I was talking to my students most of the time and tell them, uh, what is health? The definition of health is also very beautifully told in, our, uh, in Ayurveda. Health is nothing but a combination of physical integrity and mental integrity. Physical integrity means the entire body structures, body organs functioning in a balanced way. 
That's why very clearly, samadosha samadatu samagmischa malakriya. You see that at the first line goes completely to the physical level. Second line, prasannat mendra manaha swasthe tiya bhidiyate. It goes for the mental, uh, mental faculties. But Ayurveda do not stop there. It goes beyond this level, manas and uh, indriyas. Manas and indriyas and atma. It goes beyond the mental faculties, atma, soul, that is the consciousness. So indriyas, all the sensory organs. So very beautifully Ayurveda explained. In modern science, they do not touch all these things. They just, they just stop at the level of physical level. That's all. Entire, they, 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 entire modern, uh, modern system functions around chemistry. That's all. There is nothing beyond the chemistry, whether it's uh, in the brain or the physical level, just biochemical uh, science. The modern science is just nothing but the biochemical process of understanding, mechanism of, bio, mechanism of understanding the biochemical process is allopathy. But Ayurveda just goes beyond the physical level. That's the greatness of this science. That's where the entire the Ayurvedic technologies which, is, which includes so many things which we are going to study soon. So now uh, we all know about the coronavirus. It's, we all know better than our uh, uh, friends. We know about the coronavirus these days because I say I don't want to go too much into the coronavirus. I don't want to discuss, but every human knows what is it. Just two slides I want to finish. Then I want to get into the Vedic technologies, how we can work on that. Well, first strain of the C virus, coronavirus, you know, it was affected a couple of years ago and uh, it was affecting um, the, uh, those days. So we were all uh, sitting at home, we were not doing anything and there is a physical, lack of physical activities so out there. Of course, without the pandemic also, people are sitting at home. People are always sitting at home, even without pandemic. Most of the people, they don't have any physical work. So whether you have pandemic or don't have pandemic, people are always sitting at office, only the difference is they're sitting at home instead of their office. The sitting is there, sitting is common, whether the pandemic or not pandemic. So this idea of living, the, the te technology has changed the, the, uh, the entire human, human, human intellectual levels. The technology has come forward and completely changed the human lifestyle. So we cannot say only because of the pandemic, people are, uh, 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 are locked down inside, no. It is always inside only, even before pa pandemic. So uh, the sensory perception started. So what happens is when you're always there, uh, the stress levels, you know, before pandemic also, I, I live in Europe since almost 80 to 20 years. I know, uh, I have seen before pandemic, how people are under stress. So the subject of stress, now it came, pandemic, because, the, because, the, because of, of concentration on the, uh, stress levels, the focusing on the stress levels has become more these days. That is the reason we are trying to understand how to, how to work on this uh, uh, stress and how to, uh, more than working on the stress, you need to know how to organize your uh, thoughts and emotions. For that, Vedic technologies has a very, very good answer in Ayurveda. Of course, coronavirus pandemic uh, took another turn, uh, you know, in the uh, late 20, 2020 and recently also we have seen Again, UK infections is going on. Again, uh, in other uh, countries also, the infection rates are going on now. In Russia, yesterday, there was a news that the highest spike of uh, virus is going on. They are telling it's because of the vaccines. Uh, they are not taking it because of the uh, lack of vaccine, the vaccination, you know, uh, in Russia, they were taking only 30% of the population. They were taking, they were on the vaccinations. Uh, but uh, India is far better doing, you know, they're, they're almost, uh, uh, 70 to 80 percent, uh, they got uh, vaccination done in India, but the U.S. also is, is going back again. In, so the problem is here is the vaccination is not the solution. Vaccination is not going to solve the problem soon. According to my research, which I made in different countries in Europe, vaccination is not the solution, but vaccination could reduce the risk. It doesn't mean that you should not uh, Hey, I will not take vaccination. No, we can't say like that. We, we, we can take, we could, we should take, according to me, we should take. The risk is less, but still, you know, because of vaccinations from childhood, I'm not the greatest supporter of the vaccination, but the situation is like that. We have to take. So, and there is, there is a, there are, uh, these are the B117 and B131.351 strains. Uh, we all know about it, about includes uh, several uh, mutations, you know, 
uh, the mutations are going on. You know, for me, I always tell my students, it's a, it's not the viral mutation. It is a mutation in your uh, uh, mental faculty. You know, when your mutations are hap happening in your mental faculties, uh, viral mutations, it's nothing actually. It's a very minimum effect we'll have, have on your physiology. When you have a mental faculty which is mutating thousand times, million times more than the viral mutation, nobody can stop you. Even vaccination is, going, is not going to help you. These mutations in our mental faculties must stop. This is important that we need to address that area. So, but still we need to know what is mutation. We, you all know several mutations, you know, the spike proteins, you know, the spike proteins is very important uh, uh, for the, uh, the viral, uh, uh, you know, producing uh, viral action on the human infected. The spike proteins is changing, you know, every time the spike proteins are changing, the configuration, the chemical structure, the chemical compositions of the spike proteins, everything is changing time to time, you know. So that is causing much more infection in the human cells. The spike is also the viral origin that human immune system. What happens with, when, they, when it is changing, automatically the body response to the spike also changes. So the body changes. The physically you can change, but you mentally if you're having mutations more than the physical response, God only can help us. So it's a very important to have a stable mental faculties, at least when you're undergoing the process of uh, the body's responding, the body's immunization, a process to the viral uh, the infections so the body is trying to uh, trying to do as much as is possible. But even your mental mutations is going on thousand times more than the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the 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 response from the body, then uh, it will have a great effect on the the body response. That's why even a vaccination is not working on the people because of this kind of um, in, uh, this kind of lack of coordination between the faculties, mental faculties and physical faculties. And we, I just showed the pictures and most of you know that. I don't want to go into the details of the uh, why, uh, coronavirus. I, I'm actually reluctant to talk about uh, virus because uh, uh, most of the people we are just focusing on the virus, we are forgetting the normal diseases. Many doctors have forgotten what, how to treat them, the basic lifestyle disorders. This is crime. So it's very important to people, the virologists, they will take care of the, uh, uh, the specialists who are in this area, they will take care. Rest of the doctors like us must focus more on the, the lifestyle disorders, how to work, how to prevent the diseases, lifestyle disorders. So we, we just, we, our focus is mainly only on the viruses. It's not going to help. It's going, that is the one of the reason I think because of the too much of focus, concentration on the virus, well, the coronavirus, or the, this pandemic, people are, Losing their, uh, losing their health, what the basic lifestyle disorders, what they are getting regularly, that nobody's working on that. That is causing even worse problems than the pandemic. That is why there's an aggravation of all the diseases. Blood pressure is going up now, diabetes is going up now, because people, doctors are not, not focusing on this area, they're focusing only on the virus. You know, Still, you, you, there is no answer for the virus. No doctor knows how to treat that. So in that case, best option is just follow the simple procedure what the doctors can do. The basic things is just follow the and prevention, use the Vedic technologies in Ayurveda and yoga, how to get rid of these infections. In Ayurveda also we call it as uh, Janapada Dvamsa, communicable disease is mentioned in uh, Charaka. Janapada community, Dvamsa destruction, you know, Janapada means a community. Uh, those days, you know, in uh, older days in India, uh, you know, the ancient uh, times, people used to live there in community, you know. Uh, uh, well, that was Domsa means destruction. There's a destruction, you know, even the olden days, they had this communicable disease. Actually, thanks to the vaccination, we are living today. Thousands of millions of people used to die before. Die before. When the flu comes, thousands of, in India, many people used to die. I heard that uh, in 1948, when British people left uh, India, uh, the lifespan of Indians was around 22, 28 to 30 years, I believe, I, I heard somewhere. But now the lifespan has gone to 68 to 70 years in India and rest of the European countries also reached 88 to 85. It's not because the population is increased in India. It's not because of the, but, but it's also be, it's because of the longevity of the lifespan. You know, if the population increases, not just, but. So we have to, in India, they need to balance the birth rate. Otherwise there's no, there is no use of giving vaccination because the new populations keep on, keep on coming there, you know. So that's very important to address. 
the ancient text of ayurved charaka samhita you know it's written there janapada dwamsa vyadi which means world wide epidemics they very clearly mention world wide epidemics those days also they they understand this because there was a communication between other countries those days from india to other countries rest of the world was moving on you know uh, how many countries are there we don't know but still people are moving on people people are doing conferences and we have a lot of uh, Uh, in india we have a lot of evidences uh, in takshashila university all these universities the people are coming from other countries to india they used to study their ancient vedic scholars you know there's a lot of uh, uh, materials available evidence available how the university was functioning uh, thousands of years ago in india so we can prevent coronavirus the secret of prevention of uh infection is simple very nicely told in ayurveda work on your agni agni is the one i think may, some people, some of the my students are here uh, they know what is agni the agni is the digestive fire the digestive fire the fire here in 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 the in the stomach and the pancreas helps for the helps the digestion of the food what you're taking that food after the digestion become supplies the nutrition to datus you know seven tissues rasa rakta plasma blood that's what we call it in modern science but that's a transference of the, uh, the 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 tissue growth so the tissue transformations also occurs with agni so the agni plays a very very important role in prevention of infections so many people we, they forget they should focus on the agni how is my appetite today what can i eat today my appetite is very low low appetite for a long term people can get infection this many people don't know so that's why agni is very important good when you take food it should digest properly you should go to toilet uh, properly every day if you go to toilet in the morning every day you, your appetite is good all time the appetite is coming you're eating food that people will not get virus so that is why in ayurveda very clearly they said dinacharya daily routines what you should do in the morning what you should do in the afternoon what what you should eat in the night all these things very clearly Uh, we have the materials are available in ayurved even in online you can go and search what is agni you can search you will understand the beauty of this simple principle if people can follow absolutely infection process the infection even will not attack you any organism will not any organism will attack because the first dimension of human physiology the deficiency of the human physiology starts from this agni level when this dimension of uh, intelligence you know agni is a kind of intelligence the human intelligence which transforms a a is a, a, a small child into a big human being so that intelligence of agni is very important to understand that intelligence of agni we have to nourish it we have to understand the mechanism of function then the human growth is taking place our body is nothing but accumulation of food our mind is nothing but accumulation of uh, thoughts and emotions thoughts that's all this is nothing so it's just accumulation in small when we are child we don't have we did not born with the big body we were born with a small child then we grown up so when you are growing this agni helps for the metabolism that's why it's for me always i tell my students focus on agni every day check your agni what is agni the more more details you can get online also dinacharya routines it's very important for us to understand if you do not do dinacharya according to principles of ayurveda many people can get infected till now i follow dinacharya of ayurveda very correctly and i have been tested pcr for 15 to 16 times i'm always negative it doesn't mean that i, I cannot i may not be positive in the future possibilities may be there if my immune system goes down but till today i don't have because i follow strictly the regime of ayurveda the rules of ayurveda if you can follow the nacharya i think the risk of getting virus is 60 to 70% will come down 60 to 70% i have seen in my patients most of my patients did not had affected with virus at all it is possible and uh, there are simple herbal remedies ayurveda also says i think for your doctors local doctors ayurveda doctors you can consult them a simple thing is the paladi churna talisadi churna all the treatments are available but uh, this are mahasudarshana churna all these are available that you can uh, get it uh, you can get it from your local doctors or something and there are also pranayamas 
uh, it's written here bastrika kapalabhati that uh, uh, brahmari udga uh, ujjayi pranayama udgit pranayama all the yoga people are there here they must be knowing so prevent yoga is a technology yoga is not just exercise it's a technology ayurveda is not exercise it's just some food or uh, spices ayurveda is a technology when we say technology means everybody can use it when we say science just science means so some people only can study some people can use it when we bring it under technology then the whole world can use that now we will come to other dimension of understanding of uh, the mental faculties we will try to unfold the mechanism of uh, uh, different dimensions of the uh, faculties we will try to understand what is sattva sattva you must have known uh, sattva rajas toma gunas but here the sattva is mind and it regulates the body because of its association with the soul the mind body the mind uh, the mind has got different parts again you know the mind has got uh, manas buddhi ahankara chitta so these are four Man, mind uh, intellect ego that is uh, identify identification of a human being it is not proudness or uh, ego of it is wrongly understood what is uh, ego ahankara means it's not just ego it is identity of a human being and consciousness the unconsciousness is atma again the soul this is the mind and the consciousness they are connected each other that level of understanding we need to understand to organize your mental faculties to function in a balanced way that we are going to see how to understand these different dimensions of this mental strength of a human being if we understand that easily we can uh, come down with this pandemic level easily we can prevent uh, mental disasters in this pandemic level because of the lack of knowledge of all these things people are suffering we will see we will try to explore that so in ayurveda uh, depending upon the strength the mental strength it's divided as three parts that is pravara madhyama avara pravara means higher level higher mental strength madhyama means medium level avara means inferior level so the mental strength of a human being is divided into three parts higher intellectual medium intellectual and inferior intellectual let's see what is it so what happens is exactly here what is intellect intellect is is the it it, it is a one of the faculty is one of the faculty which receives the information from the mind and transforms the information to the consciousness to the identity and consciousness so the it acts as a bridge bridge between the mind and the or the outer mind and the consciousness we we also call consciousness as the inner mind you know the difference between them is simple so the inner mind inner mind and consciousness and the outer mind and the intellect intellect has a discriminative capacity it discriminates what are the it receives the information from outside it discriminates them that discrimination so information it sends to the physical level then physiology acts according to that so if you want if you, if you see something uh, i want to drink water your intellectual should say it, it don't drink it is not good for your body so then according to the intellectual uh, information you take you try body is trying to respond to the reflexes of the intellectual mechanism so that's what in ayurveda very nicely said buddhi buddhi means intellect buddha means the person who goes above the intellect the person who goes above the intellect he is called as buddha so we call gautama buddha it's just it's not his it's not his name his name is gautama why he became buddha because he is above the intellect but we common people we are below the intellect means we are inferior that's why we are we are prone for all sorts of uh, uh, informations we are coming and information is bombarded and intellect uh, intellect is trying to store them as much as fast possible then you transform as a disease in the physical level so the, all the problems is coming from externally this is very important the more the information we are taking the more the disasters the body will occur so the tech, all the time the information should be cut off so what are the mechanisms to cut that that we are going to see now so what happens in uh, when a person having an excellent mental faculties is very stable man you know the person is having a very good mental faculties what happens to him even though the physically 
he is uh, weak, even though physically he is tired, physically he doesn't have any, uh, uh, even the infections comes to him, when the pandemic attacks him or any other bacterial attacks him, he's still stable mentally. That kind of person we call it as pravara sattva, means higher intellectual person. It's very, very important for us to understand this high pravara sattva. Physically, he is not well. Mentally, he is strong. So if you are mentally, you are strong, then physical solutions are very easy. So that is why we all should work for to become pravara sattva. So this is another dimension of understanding the how to prevent the diseases. So we have to enhance our mental faculties. We have to enhance a sattvic quality. What are the things? We will see that. So tolerate, he tolerates, this person can tolerate. Some people you must have seen, even a thin person will be there, but he, he can tolerate anything. He, you abuse him, you scold him, he won't react. That clearly, clearly, clearly shows that that person has higher in, intellectual status. Higher intellectual status is pravara sattva. He can tolerate the pain. He can tolerate any situations, anything, whatever happens around him, he will tolerate. He will tolerate, you know, higher into there are there are people are there, but unfortunately, 98% people are avara sattva. What is that? I will tell you now. So madhyama sattva means middle uh, uh, strength. The strength is medium, the mental strength is medium. He is also the same thing. Uh, moderate mental faculties is having, but he can able to he can able to uh, tolerate the external pressures, external stimulations, external stress people are giving to him, and also infections. He can tolerate the body, even though physically the body is not able to function, mentally he can able to balance them. That's what in pandemic, as soon as the physically we are going down and mental faculties goes down, means we are not working on the mental faculties. Our mental faculties are completely depleted during the pandemic. That we need to enhance. So what we're going to study about that soon. So, and uh, able to bear the stronger therapies moderately without producing any harmful effects, you know, and he can tolerate, he can tolerate the pain. He can adjust to the situations, any situations he can understand. It's same like uh, uh, Pravara Sattva. It's a higher uh, mental status. And now you see the inferior. This is very dangerous. That's what world is going through this line now. Entire pandemic situations, it's, 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 a, uh, it's occurring because of Avara Sattva, the mental uh, inferior status of the human faculty, inferior intellectual levels. So what is that? In this person, what happens is, even though you have a very good physical body, even though you have a very good uh, uh, immune system and everything, if, and mentally he's very low. So, so these kind of people are more prone for eventually mentally, uh, they, they cannot adjust, they cannot tolerate infections, they cannot tolerate the um, uh, the uh, stress, they cannot tolerate the, uh, the, the anxiety, they cannot tolerate the depression, and they cannot tolerate the pain. So any, any treatments, even Ayurvedic treatment we have seen, uh, you know, even they, they physically they are very good, they get just, they get just, just uh, 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 very fearful, you know, whatever the treatments you do for them. So in this kind of patients, you know, they're susceptible for all the diseases. So that's what exactly happening. In pandemic, what is happening? Even though physically you're well, you, your body functions are good, you don't have any bigger disease, yet you're, you, you're developing inferior intellectual power. That because of the information which you're receiving from the, all the technological basis, also information about the, what people are taking and just influence of others, others, what is happening with them, you're listening. And then what happening, the sattva, the mental faculty sattva is going down. Then what is that? Even though your physical body is good, when your sattva is going down, you will have an influence of them on your body. So this influences the body, creates the lower immune system, then prepare susceptible for external infections. That's exactly going on now. So the most important is for us is to improve the sattva. What are the mechanisms that we will see now? What are the techniques? In the ancient Vedas, uh, the techniques are very nicely uh, explained. Uh, what are the ways? Sorry, I maybe take 10 minutes late, uh, but I'll try to. It's a very good uh, uh, topic we, we should discuss. 
in ancient technology, there are techniques of mind control, ancient methods are there. Rishis, you can see. They're all living, no? They're all more prone for all those things. They're all higher intellectual people. All rishis are higher intellectual people, whether it is Charaka or Shusruta or Vagbata, the higher intellectual people. That's why they could be able to bring this knowledge of Ayurveda to us. Ayurveda is not manufactured in laboratories. And if Ayurveda is not uh, uh, laboratory-wise discovered, no. Ayurveda is a divine knowledge. It, 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 this knowledge has come from Pravara Sattva. The knowledge of Ayurveda has come from Pramara Sattva, higher intellectual cap capacity of the person. That is why even Ayurvedic doctors just learning some herbs, treating the treat medicines is not going to help. A successful Ayurveda, Ayurvedic Vaidya is one who works on the Pramara Sattva. He must increase its sattvic quality. Then only he can achieve the results. Otherwise, Ayurveda will not work like modern system. This is clear. Everybody is not successful in Ayurveda. The person who works on this sattva, sattva qualities will be very successful in the same way. How to organize them? How to bring up your sattva? First is abhyasa, constant practice. You need to do constant, whatever the, whatever you want to do, do it uh, properly. You know, if you want, do, if you are doing some mistake, do it properly. Then you will achieve, you will understand what is the outcome of the mistake. If you are here and there, and then it will be very difficult for, the, for you to organize the even mistakes. The mistakes can, should be organized. It's impossible for, for people to have a balanced physiology. It's not possible. So what are the things? The practice is an earnest and persistent attempt to change the nature of the mind. The more, the more you keep on practicing, you know, practicing, practicing, the mind always goes in different directions. So you have to bring it back. You have to bring it back constantly. You need to practice to bring back this various uh, uh, movement of the mental faculties. They go different ways. The mind has no stability. The mind has no organ. You see that. The mind do not have any organ in the body. There is no place for the, uh, there is no exact place. There is no a, 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 a designed organ for the uh, mind here. Okay. And uh, Patanjali also says that. It is restless. Mind is always restless, you know. Already restless when Vata is growing up, it has become even restless. So the mind is restless always. So what is the point of what we need to do is by practicing abhyasa, you are enhancing this sattvic quality. You are enhancing the mental balance. So Patanjali uh, defines abhyasa as a continuous struggle to restrain the mind in the original form. So. In the original form is chitta. Chitta means consciousness. So you should bring back the mind to be conscious. That's why uh, we do meditation, all this yoga, all this. What far we are doing? We are trying to, we are practicing, 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 practicing. Abhyasa. The more we are doing abhyasa, we, we bring back. We, we, we don't allow the mind to go out. We try to keep it inside. But that you need to do uh, all the time. And before the mind takes in different branches, you know, mind can modify into hundreds of branches that we need to stop. By abhyasa, you can stop the modifications of mind. Patanjali also suggests that uh, restraint does not come in one day, but warrants dirga kala, it's a long time. Nirantara, you have to do it regularly. And uh, uh, procedure with uh, uh, utmost dedication, satkara, dedication. These three things are important. Dirga kala, long time. Nirantara, continuous and dedication, satkara. So these, these three, these are very important too. That's why in uh, yogic practices, meditation, dhyana, all those things, continuous practice, they said, because the mind itself is a negative. Many people, we all know that is, you should think positively, you should think negatively. This doesn't occur. Mind is always goes negatively. There is no positivity because there is no, there is no positive human being as such. It is, it is, I don't, I don't believe in that because every hour, our mind changes. How can you be a positive person? It is not possible. You can change the mental strength of the person depends on the pravara quality. If you are, have a higher sattvic quality, then yes, you can be, but I don't think anybody, we are pra, pravara sattvic. Okay. And uh, practice in real sense that merely mean mechanical. It's not the practice means repeating the same thing. No, you can do mistakes, 
but you need to understand, uh, correct, start correcting the mistakes, what you're, what's happening in day-to-day -day, uh, abhyasa, okay? Towards the better and efficient actions. So, so that's one thing. And uh, the next one I say is uh, renunciation. This is very, very important. So one is uh, practice we understood, Vedic technologies is available for us. Keep continuously practice. Whatever you do, do it regularly. Whether yoga, dhyana, whatever it is, regular practice uh, is very important to, so our, our main goal is to raise the sattva, pravara sattva. That is the only way we can bring down the, the, the mental defragmentations. I always call it a mental defragmentation during the pandemic level. So vairagya refers to aversion. Vairagya means it's not in India, we say no, Vairagya means uh, he, he leave the family, you go to the Himalayas. No, no, it is not correct actually. Vairagya is not leaving the family, children and go Himalayas. No, Vairagya, Vairagya yes, it's a meaning is called dispassion. It's, you, 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 you are trying to, uh, worldly detachments you are making, but you cannot detach, uh, you are physically you cannot, uh, detachment, right? Physically you can't have, it's only the mental actions. There is nothing in relation with the physical level. There is no physical attachment here, you know. You cannot attach with any object physically for the long time. You cannot attach physically with a chair for a long time. You cannot attach physically uh, with the aeroplane, you cannot attach. So there is no physical attachment all the time. It is the mental attachment, which we, we have to focus. That's why in ancient gurus, vairagi is mental detachment. It is not physical detachment. So what is that we will try to explore? A uh, passionate mind by active gets attached to the objects which come across and develops a strong bond of affinity. So here we need to understand what exactly, uh, why people are suffering. People are suffering because of the memory. Why people are not suffering? Why rishis are not suffering? Because they are in a higher state of consciousness. When they reach the consciousness, consciousness do not have memory. Wherever the memory, absence of memory is there, there's absolutely stillness. When there is a stillness is there, there is no memory. So when there is no memory, you are in a very, very soft weak state. That's why rishis are uh, into that higher state of consciousness. So that what they're doing by, by, by practicing every day, what they're doing is they're trying to delete their memory. What is vairagya? Deletion of memory. So vairagya is not physical detachment. Vairagya is deletion of memory. The moment you remove your memory from your mobile phone, your mobile phone will work. If the memory is there more and more, it gets jammed. It won't work at all until you delete the memory. The same thing happens in the, uh, our mind. So the deletion of memory is very important. That's why in Ayurveda, in India, we say mukti. Mukti means liberation. You try to liberate. They, they always they say, I want mukti. Mukti means is not going away from your family. Mukti is liberate from your memory, which is psychological attachments from the pre, from many births or whatever. This is psychological impressions will be there. That we need to remove, that we need to liberate. That's called Mukti, the highest state of freedom in the physical level and mental level. That's why in India, even today, if you see any elderly people, they always talk about Mukti. Their freedom means it's not, uh, you, you are free to do anything. No, that's not correct. Freedom means it's liberating from these impressions. Freedom means it's liberating from this memory impressions, which is causing illness mentally and physically. So renunciation or uh, dispassion is intended to uh, wipe off the traces. Exactly here is written. Psychological attachments. Remember. So what is uh, dispassion? Psych removing of the psychological attachments. Okay. And Patanjali defines vairagya as a mental exercise. Beautiful it is. It's a kind of mental exercises. You're trying to exercise this regularly, uh, remove it. So like in mobile phone, no, you have a memory, you delete the memory and you will come back to the normal. Mobile will come, come back to function, same thing. Keep deleting the memory. For that, you need abhyasa. For that, you need to practice. For you need some other technologies which we are going to study. The attachments are generally reflected in intense craving. What kind of attachments it is? Jealousiness, greediness, and all sorts of uh, frustrations, anger, all these attachments, you know, it's a mental, this, there is no, physically you don't have frustration, right? Physically you don't have uh, uh, violence. It's a mental provocation which makes the physical body to function. So it is a mental detachment is very important. That's why in pandemic time, we have this kind of severe manifestation of mental, mental diseases occurs because the inferior 
the utter, the, the inferior sattva. So that we have to work on that. So what is mind? Mind alone is not responsible, it's responsible for bondage and liberation. Mind alone, yes, it's a bondage and liberation. And uh, material attachments, you know, bondage, material attachments, I want this, I want that, I want this. This craving, this craving all the time creates much more memory in the mind. Repeated, repeated mem memory in the mind. That memory creates the, uh, uh, creates the uh, diseases, mentally and physically. That's why liberation, we have to liberate it, not after death. Anyway, after death, we are liberated from everything. Before the death, how we can organize our body, how we can liberate all these mental attachments. That's what the uh, uh, renunciation says. So that when you're practicing this vairagya, you will come back here. It's called as uh, in the Mukti Pinoshet, they said vasana parityaga. Parityaga means leave it. Vasana means smells, a different kind of attachment. Smells means a different kind of memory. Anything you smell, that's a, that, go, that body, uh, body immediately holds that information. The body records, the body and the mind records all the information whenever what you're seeing or not seeing. You're listening all the time that your body is recording and stores in the brain. That excess memory causes the sufferings. And abstract, abdominal uh, uh, abstract, sorry, meditation. And uh, meditation is the one way where we can, uh, uh, we can organize ourselves, the focusing on the spirituality and all this thing area by practicing Om, oh, Mantra, all those things. We can uh, uh, abstract meditation to bring back, like your talk toys, bring back its legs. When somebody provokes the talker, the tortoise brings his legs into this shell. The same way, the sense, our senses also should be drawn within us. So that is uh, adhya, uh, adhya atma vidya. So that practice we need to do. So next is pranayama, we all know. I'll finish in two, three minutes. The pranayama, we all know. What is pranayama? Pranayama, the yoga guru, our yoga guru is also there. He knows better than me. Pranayama, according to my understanding, is what I, I understood this, uh, I practice also with my patients and all. Pranayama, the prana, what we are taking is not oxygen. It is the universal force. It is the mechanism of universal force. It is a mechanism of unfolding of this uh, vital force in universally. The stillness, the power of the stillness is prana. That prana we are taking into us. So we are connected, the human beings is connected with the uh, uh, universal existence. So there is a connection between the prana we are taking and there is a stillness in the entire solar system and the galaxies. The prana is holding this entire mechanism of human body along with the solar, uh, universe. So that prana we have enhanced by daily practicing. So uh, prana shakti, vital force we call it as. There's a pranayama, it's also meaning regulating. So regulating in the control of the mind. Pranayama is very, very important because Entire galaxy and solar system, it, there is a stillness. There is no nonsense is going on like in our mind. There is a stillness, entire solar system. That stillness, we need to get it in our body. That pranayama will help that stillness, enhances the faculties. So there are so many things, uh, diseases and all, how to control the prana and all those things. I don't want to go in details because we are, there are many mechanisms called shirodhara, uh, you all know Shirodhara is a fantastic uh, to balance the uh, intellectual, it's an intellectual balance. And also Shirodhara, I, I see many people because of the Shirodhara, the mental attachment comes down. The memory comes down. The more you're taking Shirodhara, the memory comes down. It's a fantastic uh, mechanism to work on the mental level. And also, of course, Abhyanga, massages, all work on the mental faculties and Pindashvedana, all those things. Uh, this is our uh, uh, academy, and uh, we have we are doing we are doing studying all the courses. So we are teaching the students from different countries. Uh, these are our uh, our uh, uh, institutions in France and uh, Croatia and uh, other countries. And uh, so I'm in Zagreb next month. And Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Suresh, it was a beautiful presentation from the point of view of uh, Ayurveda and yoga, because Ayurveda and yoga are like brother and sister. They always go together. 
So we are using all uh, ancient wisdom from the rishis, as you said, those who brought knowledge about yoga and Ayurveda. And especially related to the topic of the stress, I just want to mention from Maharishi Patanjali, teaching about some deep, some conscious um, content, which is with us from our work as some natural urges called clashes, which can create disturbance, disturbance in our consciousness. And, um, and through the disturbance of consciousness, it can translate into the uh, physical reactions. And one of these is the urge for survival or Abhini Vesha. So that urge of survival is with us from our birth. And every living being has this in itself. Yes, yes. <laughs> we know when there is a fear. Longing, longing to live, longing to live. When there is a fear for survival, when the survival is in danger through the fear. And this is the case from this uh, pandemic and all this, um, uh, what happens uh, all over the world. People are in the state of a great fear for their survival, for their life. Insecurity. And, and, yes, and this is from deep subconscious level, creating reaction from the autonomic nervous system, fight and flight reaction, reaction of the stress. So to, to survive. And that fight and flight reaction creates all these uh, biochemical changes, which starts uh, disturbing the normal function of the physiology and decreasing the immune system and everything. So as uh, yoga and Ayurveda is giving us knowledge to realize our true nature, that as Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, our true nature is beyond the reach of the fire, of the water, of all the five elements. Nothing can uh, destroy us. So our true nature is that we are already immortal beings on the level of our soul. So that realization that we can reach through the practice of yoga and um, Ayurvedic procedures will help everybody to be able to live in this world under very severe and difficult conditions, but not gathering the stress. Because the way how we relate, how we relate to the situations which we are faced, this is causing the stress, not the situation itself, but whether we interpret this as a danger for our existence. So as more and more we are able to be conscious of our true nature and be established in that, then we are on a more safe ground and our life becomes more stable psychically and physically and strong immune system. And then we can enjoy good health and in, in the midst of all the critical conditions which can be around us present. So this is the the, the gift of the ancient knowledge. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. And I would like to ask His Excellency, uh, Raj Kumar Srivastava, to bless us with uh, the final words from his side. So as you can see that I am in the on the move. Um, <laughs> so, but yes, there is no stress. I can attend this conference by moving around. There's still no stress at face because I learn from the principles and apply in life. Thank you so much for the session. I was listening to it, whatever I could while doing multitasking. But still, most important thing is that whatever you are doing, living in the moment, reduces the stress. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency and uh, Dr. Suresh and everybody present. And uh, it's a joy to organize such um, um, lectures. And we continue uh, and we'll inform you about the future topics. Thank you, everybody. Special thanks to Embassy of India and uh, His Excellency for organizing and inviting me for this lecture. And Yadra and Koji, you are, you are my good friends since uh, many years. And it is a, uh, we, we work 
uh, with Embassy of India, we try to explore uh, the possibilities of uh, improving the health of uh, Croatia in the future. Thank you very much, sir, for having me today. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. It is Shivam, thank you.